Well, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, give me some Division 2 action today. But of course, we're back on Sichadron. So, sir, what do we got? What are they bringing? Left hand side in the blue, we have uh, Robert playing Panda Division Tatra and play Vanguard Income. Right hand side in the red, we have Mimil playing Fedjun King with a Maverick Income. So, I have soft spot over here for Tatra because they have a soft spot tank with the you know the P thirty eight T. So mm -hmm. I'm excited as all get out to you know to check that particular box if cash for drift. <laughs> um, but you know, looking overall, we have seen some really fascinating breakouts in previous weeks on this particular map. I have to say, not really a a stellar one by either side. Very standard breakout, I think, for the Soviets. Pretty standard breakout over here for Tatra. Not for nothing. I feel like it's going to be a question of who can throw away 50% of the infantry first. And looking from the fact that we have Landa Schutzen and Volkstrom, it's going to be Tatra. Yeah, these going hard in the town here. Just driving right past the Soviets. Going to be getting in close. But yeah, Mimil doesn't have a whole lot of troops in here down south. So maybe her Robert can exploit this right now and just try to push heavy here. If we look a bit more in the center... Uh, Mimo is actually pushing pretty decently onto the lung position. It doesn't have a whole lot to really follow on through, so her Roberts should be able to clear out. Oh, yeah, too. Drop in the year bombs. Yeah, that JU87 I think should be more than enough to kind of just absolutely shellack whatever's going on there. And he's up. It's going. And I think that should be enough to, shockingly enough, not kill the entire squad. I really thought there'd be something a little more impressive there. Yeah, I mean, you think it's like precision guides and everything to be a bit more precise and knocking out all the bowling pins. And by bowling pins, I mean people. Yes, exactly. But what are people? Just fleshy bowling pins. So I could put them in there. <laughs> he said, thinking. That's a good point. <laughs> but uh, a second coming in, we'll keep her stroke TT. But this guy, of course, he does have malt of cocktails. So. She made a much more explosive result, I would think. But uh, even better. I love the addition of the Feldiagos over here. Probably the only opportunity for us to make something worthwhile out of all of those freaking Volksturm and just yeah. troops. Yeah, the Feldiagos absolutely slap as infantry. Stumgevers and a sniper rifle, semi auto sniper rifle. At, yeah, 415 points. And the ability to make the Volksturm not run away. They're uh, pretty much a must take in Tatra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the nice thing about this, because Tatra, again, just kind of the, the kitchen sink division of infantry, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, really, the tanks as well. I'm, I'm not sure we're going to see maybe all of those late card P4s, but hey, who knows? By the time Phase C rolls around, we're pretty much going to know who's going to win and who's going to lose here anyway, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be... Pretty much down to her, Robert, of course, with the Vanguard income to uh, do pretty good early on, survive B, and then hopefully do decent enough in C phase. So the income in C phase is pretty negligible difference. Up north forever, yes. you're seeing Mimil push pretty heavy up here, getting the heal off to clear in the ray of the uh, pave carpet bomber. That's, that's a better way to say it. You'll, you'll pave in bombs as well, so it also fits. But we got a decent amount of firepower, the SU-122, the Yamcha, a whole lot of infantry. Mimil is going to be able to pretty easily solidify his position. Yeah, and what's we brought on in? Well, there was a P-Shrek, but like, <laughs> congratulations, you have just been connected to God's Wi-Fi. Um, so what <laughs> we have instead is we have two P-3Ls, which apparently don't think it's important to engage that part of the battle space. They're going down towards the lungs, which is a decision I do not agree with. Yeah, he's trying to Desperately holds us in together as we're seeing them all push in a bit more heavier some troops. I think our Robert might be able to actually hold on to lungs here, especially if he was to throw in that Pioneer MG into the fray. Mm -hmm. He just does not have line of sight right now. But even then, no, the Strokey getting forced back, the DT's holding the ground. I think it's going to buy him enough time to, well, catch a breath here. Yes, uh, definitely does seem possible, especially when he brings in some SS Strom kind of deals. Now, down south, the town fight looks like it should be just insanely in Herr Robert's favor. Unfortunately, we're coming into that, that nifty little issue, which is Volkssturm have no legs. 
Um, in some <laughs> cases, almost literally. But, like, the Phil Diogo lagging badly. So now we have that P3L coming on in with his massive cannon and the entry going ha 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 and sneezing at it until it gets oh. a jammed gun. There we go. I also think in town fights like this, it's, um, it's always an interesting dynamic because it's hard to get good recon in a town for obvious reasons, unless you can use a recon plane. So you're always a little bit hesitant in fully sending everybody up into the front line as well. But yeah, also just having the, all the folks from in the front line get in suppressed also slows down your forward momentum. It does very much. Now that the Feldiaka is now finally getting close enough to bring those guys back to heal, but there's still RPTRs, there's still DTs, there's still an awful lot of junk down there that you really don't want to be dealing with. Yeah. Oh, another Stuka run up north. I and... am very confused by where the machine guns went and then where the bomb went on that one. But yeah, know. it's not 1940 anymore. All the good pilots are dead. <laughs> that's that's actually quite fair. Uh, Coop Gun to the northern side as well, so an 88 mil. Not really, in my mind, the, the biggest and best investment, but I can understand why he did it, at least. Yeah, I think for Robert, he's... He's just kind of cutting his losses up and all. So, okay, you you have the heal. I get yeah. Just don't, you're not getting out of town now, however. I'm going to put on the heavy anti-tank. I'm going to bring in more cross-eyed Stuka pilots. And he's probably just going to try to hold that northern side and try to keep that momentum down south and the breakout position of the map. Well, now he just sent the same Stuka pilot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know... It's like, to quote Spaceballs, it's like, any other assholes we got on this ship? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. One thirty-seven mil completely shutting that down, of course. The dangers of using the precise bomber Stuka. This is where we like cluster Stuka, so like, we're very pro cluster Stuka on this channel. Because you don't need to do any fancy loop-de-loop, -loop, even though it makes a cool Russian sound. No. But the cluster Stuka comes in, drops bombs, gets out, kills is too. Leave that junk for like playing when you play IL-2 or War Thunder mm -hmm. or whatever. But, but like, yeah. In this one here, I'd rather just keep my plane nice and level, hit the bongo burr button, and life goes on. <laughs> I, mean, I have that is. button on my keyboard as well. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Meanwhile, the, the, the three, uh, the 30p down here, the, the year two is year out of here as... Mm -hmm. uh, the BF-109 chasing him actually goes down to a 37 mil top gun. Yeah. And we're seeing the Manila is actually really keeping the momentum put up north. Not content with the hill. Going down into the town. And even sending a BA-20 along the flank here. So that Pack 43 has its works cut out for it. He does. But he's also going to be able to engage that Sherman to the north. And while he's not going to engage... A whole lot to the southern side of oh, wait is that martyr engaging to the north no he's not engaging in infantry shouldn't he yes there we go yep uh, i think yeah high robert should be able to secure these lines let's see if the half track fire support being brought on in and if he can just pan just track the ba10 i mean northern side he's just gonna have to deal with yeah however it is i think it's all just gonna come down to the south southern side Whoever her Robert can break through, otherwise he's just not going to have the momentum. Yeah, and unfortunately for him, the BA-10 is actually you know spicy enough with the Sherman that he can take things down uh, to Pound Town, really. And now mm -hmm. leaving him with no P3s in that town, he's got a martyr way the heck in the back, and two P3s just kind of like slowly driving their way to the front. Not a pretty picture. No, not at all. Just seen down south, it's definitely not looking as good here for Robert. I mean, he does have some better infantry, the same grenadiers and other troops, but it's a little bit um, lacking now in terms of numbers. And Mamil actually has a decent amount of fire support here of the m -Sure, the BA-10, the anti-aircraft gun, and that's all some infantry holding the line. But here's the point where you bring that flak virulink into the actual town, and you say, you know what, I need to take extra suppression, but mm -hmm. we need you. We need you just to actually kill something. Oh, SU-2 up north flying. Yes, it does have uh, bombs. Hits the Pack 43. Gets some very good hits here. Yeah, Robert does not want to be losing that Pack 43. That is an expensive call-in. You know, okay, to be fair also, it's not really too much for it to shoot. 
I mean, you can blow up some amateurs, but it's not like there's a deadly IS-2 which immediately needs to die. No, no, that, that's the ISU 152s later. That, that's going to be the issue. Mm hmm. We see right now, JU 87, a couple guys just kind of lingering, kind of lurking around the battle space, in the same way that a butler polishing a glass kind of sits over there in the bar. But, um, or at least, I mean, that's, that's what I assume. I've never really had a butler myself. But, you know, <laughs> you know life goals, maybe, someday. But down south, they finally get those P3L, uh, P3Ls back into the map, back into the, you know, the town. Um, and not for nothing, I get the feeling they're both going to die very, very badly, very, very quickly. Yeah, you know, if I recall, that's one. I believe that Emsha has a stabilizer, which allows it to shoot very quickly. Well, even screw that, even rather quickly, there's also the BA-10, which can pierce the skin from P3L at 200 meters. Like, this is not exactly, you know, some William Tell shot going from the other side of the map. Yeah. And we've seen the Strelkies, they smell blood in the water. Those anti-tank grenades want to find the engine deck of that Panzer 3L. And by God, he's going to find it. Yeah, I remember that level of uh, Call of Duty. That was not, not a fun one to do on Veteran. <laughs> but I can tell you, when you, when you loft two softballs downrange, yeah, that's mm. enough. <laughs> Very good hit, yeah. Knocking him out. And that's really effective here from Emil. He's been managed to hold the line down south. He doesn't exactly have the flags in the town down south right now, but he still is at a 15-9, he's trading effectively, and he's now got a platoon of Strelke being brought on in to retake that point. Indeed. Indeed. Now, looking northern side, Volkstrom have, for some reason, not decided to move to the southern side of that, that forest and maybe at least stopped the bleeding from a minus two just down to a minus one. Mm -hmm. uh, the group is back in play. So is a Tiger, though, too, which is... An interesting investment in the northern side. I guess, I guess. Oh, yeah. Here's the question. Do you throw it in the center by the lung, or do you keep it up north? Like, I, I think I kind of want to hear your thoughts on this one. No, that's, that's a kind of cool. Like, um, like where, where do you take it? Because if you put it up north, it's a bit more open, and you can hit the plateau. Go down south, it's a bit dangerous at the start. But if you can get it onto the lungs, it's good fire support. Honestly, I'd say my final answer, Khan, up north. Because if he can retake the town here, that's going to be very critical for him. To I don't think he's going to take back Northern Hill anytime soon. But at least give him another angle of attack to try to hit the lungs from the northern portion. Well, he's engaging right now the SU-122. And he's being engaged in turn by the ZIS-2. Luckily for the Zis, uh, excuse me, for the Tiger, the Zis 2 is pushed back immediately anyway by the sniper fire from the now dead Feldiago. And the SU 122 goes down. Oh, good hit, yeah. The little problem as well here is Robert, he's sending a lot of his troops to deal with the lungs, but he needs ground infantry presence in that town. Apart from that one partisan Volkstrom there, probably shaken in, well, I say shaken in the boots, but I got bloody eight pounds of. Panzerfaust. They could probably just blow up at Amsha once they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, once they're ready. But I think it seems yep. like it's going to be forever before that happens. And I think this tiger is going to go and... Yep, he's going to get himself killed by a stroke. Here comes. Three, oh. two, one. Engage. Wow. He's going to die. This is time to, time to retreat, my friend. He's not going to miss twice. I always like his, like... A reload time on grenades. I mean, I I understand balance all of that, but I just imagine like the dude's like, "Where's my other grenade? Does anyone have it? I I, I was in my other pocket." To me, it's I I kind of think of it the same way from like it was even Private Ryan, where like the first guy goes up with a sticky bomb and blows himself up, and the other guy's like, "You light it, you light it." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my head cannon for it. <laughs> um, you see right now that the checks are trying to put themselves into those lungs of the half-track right behind them. And this is the weird thing. These guys actually could push back this infantry just because their their firepower is so light and so anti-infantry. Yeah, like Panzer 38Cs, of course, maybe a little bit outdated, but for 20 points, they're very cost they're very cost effective with about 60 frontal armor. Yes, they are. <clears throat> yes, they are. Meanwhile, down south, you're saying about getting some more firepower into this town. And that has just not happened. The SS Sturm Grenadier is getting absolutely wrecked 
by every DT known to mankind and DPs and some every Ds are just getting like these Ds have not pretty. Yeah, because her Robert has not been able to trade effectively down south after our initial engagement here, and Racine is just going to collapse. And you know why he wasn't able to do that? Because of freaking Volksturms. Mm hmm. I get the gimmick, it's not a gimmick I like. I you could say you're a bit disheartened. Uh, yeah, you could certainly say that. You could say that again if you wanted yeah. to, but I think I'd rather watch this martyr give himself up for the fatherland as just, like, grenades galore come out. That's one. And he goes down with this one. So there, there we go. So, looking behind, Hetzer's gonna Hetz, Stug coming in, Volkstrom there as well, and the first piece of infantry to run afoul of this flak veer thing i want to see as well but I, I don't know if those guys are really oh there's a couple optimistic guys looking really good outside of town that's gonna get shut down pretty quickly yeah also up north we do see memo actually invest in a t-3045 getting in a pretty critical position on that northern lung going to be forcing back out marta free and just zoning out that northern area and then they're down south another t-3045 being brought on in and that's, that's, that's a pretty target-rich environment for Yagpanjakan. Yes, yes. Now, the, the Northern T-3045, I do actually want to kind of update. He is going into the lungs themselves, so goes from very useful to questionably more useful. He's going to be able to take out the P-38s. That's not surprising there, but it's also the m that's right there as well. So, okay, cool. But yeah, that should be enough to clear it out. Yeah, I just don't think you need two medium tanks here. I'm just going to nitpick. I'm nitpick. Yes, you two coming in, going to be getting some very good reconnaissance. Flag filling actually fulfilling its role. But yeah, it's just, it's just coming down to the infantry fights here. Especially down south, with just a huge amount of strokies and just decent amount of fire support here. And her robot's only you know, bringing out a squad or two, and then they get picked off from by one. But that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, this was the phase where Mimil was going to either win or he was going to die. There was really nothing in between. Indeed. And Stuka's is coming in. First guy missed. Once again. <laughs> so in how you... Oh, one's going to make it. Yeah, I mean, you, you throw enough stuff at the wall, eventually something has to hit. Gets two kills, but yeah. Well, the Fleck Veerling engages the T-3485, um, somehow hits everything but the tank, and just gets completely blown apart. Damn. Damn. You always expect more of the flag filling. Up north, we do see her roll, but actually making finally a, an effective push into his town. Going to be clearing up the infantry. But there's an ISU. 152 on that hill. He has the high ground. He has, I think, a pretty big gun. And there's a lot of soft targets for him to shoot at. Yeah, and, and if there's not enough uh, shaft, excuse me, soft targets, I suppose the shaft targets. Uh, there's a tiger being brought on in a little bit. The question is, will he get to the front lines before everything goes pear-shaped? Um, my my heart says yes, but my mind says no. Damn. Yeah, ISU is just the hand of God picking off everything one by one. We're also seeing the 160mm uh, mortar being brought up here from Emil as well. So that's going to be some heavy duty firepower to start blowing up some buggers. Oh, I'm sorry, I was watching the Hetzer as he somehow missed from literally under 100 meters when T-3045 was right in front of him. Ah, oh, of course! He has no... Hetzer's gonna power. head so they can't. Yeah, just like, jeez, dude. Um, You know, for an ambush predator, it's pretty much not what you want to be seeing, your ambush predators. Verf Raman, though, he is here. And he's gonna be aiming towards that hillside, unfortunately... You know, whenever he goes and sends that uh, Wurfkörper Sprang uh, Granate, it's not going to be enough. It's just, it's it's not. It's not going to take out the, it's not going to take out the ISU. And it's just, um, I think we're, we're seeing ourselves go into a very, very dark place for Herr Robert. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, pretty confidently, with no caster's curse being able to inflict his decision, he's probably going to lose. So like, let's take his two times two. At 45. Yep. All right. And that's kind of the issue here, folks, is that Tatra, very, very gamey, but at the same time, they just, 
you got to be very, very precise on how you deploy your initial breakout. And I think, again, if you want to bring stuff like Volksturm, fine, I get it. But then don't throw all of them in the same area. you got to be much more discreet, let's say, than that. Yeah, kind of like a uh, Tuesday's replay. Uh, Mimil just treated very effectively. And also just being able to take a northern part of the map, which is now going to get saturated by the Verframan. And really exploit that location because he held onto that town for a long time, and you know, her Robert has not been able to get back onto that plateau effectively. Yeah, he's just traded effectively north, south, and in center. So very good job, yeah. Yes, indeed. So the Ruff Ramen, I saw him fire two rounds. I think he died somehow. I'm not sure from what, but he died from something. Uh, Yog Pants in the middle, you know kind of desperate to try to push things back. Tiger came up, took out the ISU, but, you know, push comes to shove, down south. A lot of this infantry over here, I think, actually survived since the beginning. Or very yeah. close to it, if nothing else. It's definitely snowballed out of control here, because that's a lot of angry Russians slowly making their way to the front line. Yes. Well, they're making the front line as they go, let's be real. Yes. Now, JU-87, if you want to go and bring in some, you know, ground attack planes, that's fine. Just... Let's do it. There's something a little bit more consistent. I think the JU-87, unfortunately, is is a card that I don't think belongs in a lot of decks any longer. Not not in this particular format. Yeah, it, it can work very early on if there's no AA, but as you see, even just a single 37 mil can just shut you down. And yeah, pretty standard uh, 900 KD difference here. And, you know, it feels like it should have been more than that. And I think one of the reasons it wasn't was just because of all of those stinking Volkstrom getting, you know, popped early, they mm -hmm. don't move the needle a lot in terms of, of kill value. But um, felt like a lot more died over here for the for the Germans as opposed to the Soviets. Indeed. And then we got the BA-10, the Emptor during Rel. Yeah, the some decent... Oh, the ISU. Yeah, some decent standout. From the other side, uh, we have Schutt over here who got himself a couple of kills. And the Feldjager, of course. So one of the few times the officer actually did something. Yeah. Um... And, and you know what? I will call out the Volksturm, but at that point, I'm really putting lipstick on that pig. Um, <laughs> and the Ogpanzer. Yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too crazy. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Solid game. Yeah. Open and shut. Well done over here for, you know, Fedekin. Uh, unfortunately, Tatra, not really feeling. Going to throwing a tantrum, but not really kind of doing what they need. But uh, I think that's going to do it for today for our Division 2 coverage, unless you have anything to add, sir. No. Well, folks, in that case, then, until next time, I'm Conal Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.